Uh, this is what our encouragement that uh, if you have the burning testimonies, the testimony here is we do it like once a month, but we encourage all the people of God that if you have the burning testimonies, just approach us, approach pastor that, pastor, I need to, I cannot wait for that um, for that, and it's usually it's end of the month. But if you cannot wait for that end of the month, just come to us and say, I have the burning testimonies. So just like our daughter was saying that she asked us, when is the testimony? And it cannot wait for, because uh, she has a lot to share. So, uh, hi. Um, hello everyone, good afternoon. Um, uh, I'm back from uni now, but for those that may not know me well, um, my name is uh, Hudia and um, I'm the daughter of uh, Pastor and Pastora. Um, uh, I just, uh, last week, so I wanted to testify because um, uh, there's a lot that I've reflected on this past year that I felt that I could share to be an encouragement to everyone. Um, I'm back from uni for the, the summer, and last week I went to a summer youth camp uh, in a church up in London, and there was a lot of worship and um, activities, and the main focus of that youth camp was um, the phrase, the heart of worship. And that's something maybe a lot of us have heard before for the kids there and for even here. Um, we grow up in church and I'm sure we hear that phrase all the time, the heart of worship. Um, but what does that really mean to us to have that heart of worship? Well, for me, I... Um, thought I knew. I too obviously grew up in church and I was always around that word, that um, the phrase, the heart of worship. It's in our songs, it's in our um, sermons, it's in our prayers. And when I first independently chose to give my life to God when I was baptized, I really felt the Holy Spirit. I would read the Bible every day. The only music and media I would consume was that of God's. Um, but what sometimes we as Christians may seem to forget or isn't always talked about is that once we commit our life to God, it's not easy. Um, once we set that journey to be in God's way, it's not easy. And in fact, we meet a lot of trials and hardships. Over time growing up, especially for the youths, I'm sure they can um, relate to this, growing up in this society, in this culture, this generation, there is a lot that goes on behind closed doors. Sorry. <laughs> um, there's a lot of wrong influences from social relationships, wrong friendships, addictions, vices, mental illness, the list goes on. Um, and as shameful as it feels, I stand here and say that I have had my experiences with all of those, and it caused my standing with God to become very rocky. And I felt at points that I could not stand in front of him anymore. Um, this past year, um, honestly, it drove me to some very low points in my mental health. Um, it's some really deep stuff, but I say this so it's an encouragement to show that we're all facing battles behind closed doors. We come to church, we're happy, we're joyful, but there's things that only in our hearts we hold close to us that only we know. So the past year, um, I suffered from, these may be new to my parents, maybe they might have not heard this before, but um, I suffered things like an eating disorder, which destroyed my relationship with myself and with my self-esteem. There are points in my relationships with my friends, with my loved ones, where it became toxic. And I even started to blame myself for things that happened to me in the past um, that I blamed myself and I blamed God for. Um, points where I felt I was uh, used when I was younger. 
I just started to blame myself and for God um, and God for the experiences that I felt and all of those issues ate me up inside and I felt so broken, so hurt and so confused and so alone because when we commit our life to God there is such a heavy burden there that we feel like we always must be perfect all the time. And yes, we must strive for um, being perfect, but we are made of flesh, and there are times where we fall short. But it says in the Bible, but the time is coming, indeed it's here now, when true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father is looking for those who will worship him in that way. Uh, John chapter 4, verse 23. It was when I heard this verse, this wake-up call, it encouraged me. And it said that the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. And the Father is looking for those people. We must remember when the Bible says worship, it's not just singing. It's not just our songs. It's not just the words that we speak from our lips. But it's the way that we live. It's our way of life. And actually in the next verse it says, for God is the spirit. And that hit me. Because it meant that we must live with God in us. We must live with God beside us. But amen to this church. This is what I was reminded of, that God is always with us. The times where I felt so alone in my relationships, in my battles, in my day-to-day -day life where I started to feel so useless and pointless and I thought that I could barely hold on anymore. Who was it that was actually holding me together? It was God. He was always there, and it says in the Bible that he is the spirit to our worship, to our life. Now, it says that we must worship him in spirit and in truth. So what is the truth? Yes, we say the truth is the word of God. It's his teaching. It's his word. But in our worship, in our way of life, how do we bring our truth? And that's to be honest. That's to be truly wanting to worship, truly wanting to live in an honest desire to actually live with God. Um, that when we come to church and we have our service and we feel good inside, when it's time to start the week again, the truth in our worship is when we worship in honesty and that we actually want God in our spirit, uh, God's spirit in our lifestyles. So what I learned and what was shown to me and what I think is important for, um, I aim this at the youths, but also this is important for adults as well, is that um, wherever we are in our lives, no matter how far we think we've fallen, how many wrong things that we've done, how many um, confusions or feelings that we may feel that we hold against God or we get scared to come to God about, even if we haven't started our walk with God yet. He will always be there waiting for us and he does love you. He loves me, he loves you, he loves everyone in this room. And even if there may be things in our mind that tells us he doesn't love you anymore or you've... I'm sorry. Even though there are things in our mind that may tell us that he does not love you anymore or you've gone too far or... You can't stand in front of him anymore. We must bring our truth to our worship and our honesty in truly wanting to walk with God and worship him in the way we live our lives. So the heart of worship, it's something we hear all the time, but I just want to encourage everyone that every single one of us are is um, on our own journeys and on our own relationships with God. We may hear someone say, oh, haven't you already said you will go back to God? Or, oh, they do this every time. Or maybe you see people standing in the front that they're so in love with God and maybe you're standing there and you wish that was you, but you don't know how. You see people raise their hand. You see people cry and you look at that and you think, I want that too, but maybe you're scared to raise your hand. Maybe you're scared to, like, commit. Maybe you're afraid. You're holding something back. So I just wanted to encourage everyone that you are all on your own journey with God. And that's something between God and you. And God sees your desire. And if it is true, he will honor it. 
um, I thought maybe some people may need this right now um, because the Lord knows that I needed this. Um, in the youth camp, there are many other youths that were experiencing the same thing I was. So I just thought maybe this encouragement, this word, um, may help someone else just as much as it helped me and um, how much I needed it. So no matter how far you think uh, you are from him, he will always be there. And it's just that we must take that first step in truth and honesty of desire to want him in our life, to welcome him, and to say, Lord, I truly need you, not just in my songs or on my lips, but in my life from the morning and to the night. I need you, Lord. That is the heart of worship. Thank you.